Today I'm going to be talking about how to convert a DDR machine into a Stepmania machine as per request by uh, Great Scott uh, Back to the Future ride. So, before I begin, I actually I have to thank two people. One is my girlfriend Jamie, who's going to be doing the recording, and the second person is Brian, who let me borrow his camera, which is very expensive and I'm glad you trust me. So, now that we've got that out of the way, let's start. So the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a screwdriver, speaker wire, and um, and a JPEG. Okay? Now, you possibly will need an arcade VGA, just like this, which you can get from ultimark.com. Okay? Uh, it costs about 50 bucks, something like that. That's how much I picked mine up for. So, you would need one of these if you had a regular arcade CRT monitor, which um, it plays at 15 kilohertz. A standard arcade game plays at 15 kilohertz. So if you're going to convert waves from the computer over to an arcade monitor, you're going to need one of these um, video cards. So what you want to start doing first, okay, once you've collected those, by the way, I pulled this information off of bimanistyle.com, which uh, is free to access for anybody. You don't have to be a member. Okay. Okay. So, come on over here. So basically what you want to do is first, you just want to have like a spare computer. Um, this is just a 3.2 gigahertz computer. It's got uh, 2 gigs of RAM, and uh, it's not running the VGA arcade card. Um, because I have a separate monitor, which I got from Billabs.com, that's B-I-L-L-A-B-S.com. Um, and I picked up a, let's see, right here. This will be, let's see if, if this can be zoomed in. That is the actual item number right there. It costs about $600, $650 with shipping, but then you won't need one of those converter cards. So you can just direct connect from computer to the CRT monitor, um, and it's 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 a high definition monitor, so you can pretty put you can pretty much put any kind of graphics card you want on your uh, on your PC, and it'll be able to handle it. Just in case you didn't get that, it's right there. Okay. Okay. So what you want to do? Here, I'm going to bring the light. Okay. So I've just assembled the back here. Uh, there's two screws on the back of these doors, one right here and one right here. And I took this off. Okay. And the first thing that you want to get out, right here, this is going to be your audio box. Okay. Back it up. I guess you can see the whole thing, the whole inside. Okay. So this is your audio box right here, and right here is going to be your PCB board, which looks like this. Here. This right here is your PCB board. And this is pretty much the heart of the entire DDR machine, as far as playing the game and everything, your CD-ROM drive and so on and so forth. Uh, it's going to be hooked up to a board. Now sometimes you would think that you would have to actually take off these screws but don't take off the screws. There are actually two screws on the board itself, one right here, one right here, and they're, they're twisty screws. So take those out and just slide the whole thing out of the arcade machine. And then you'll have the first step done. By the way, this might be a multi-part video because it's not, it's, it's very detailed and I have to, uh, I think, emphasizing certain things it's going to take more than 10 minutes. So, once you take that off, you remove the board, okay? This is what your J-Pack is going to look like. I don't know if you can really see it from there, but that is what it looks like. Okay, now this may look really confusing. On the back of your PC board that you, that you just pulled out is going to be your JAMA harness. That's what this is right here. It's got about, I don't know, like 30, 30 to 40 wires in it. Okay, and, and this is going to be free. So basically you want, when you take your PC board out, uh, PCB board, make sure you disconnect this JAMA harness, okay, and hook it up to 
the JPEG. Okay, the JPEG runs about thirty dollars. So I mean, together you're probably looking at like a hundred. Well, depending. I don't know if prices went up, but together it's it's close to a hundred. So what you want to do is you just want to hook up the harness right to the uh, JPEG. Okay, and it comes with in the, the when you buy the JPEG, it comes with this cord right here, which is a PS2 cord. It's usually used for uh, keyboards, and the opposite end of it is going to be um, a USB. Now, to get the most amount of data transfer you possibly can, you probably want to hook it up to USB 2.0, which is going to give you a bigger data rate transfer. So that would be the best way to do it. Now, don't even worry about all these other wires around here because I have other buttons set up, so you don't even have to worry about that. Okay. So, once you've done that, this, uh, this cord right here, this is your PS2 cord, it leads right back here to the back of my computer, which goes right into my USB 2.0 slot. Okay, you can get that right there? Okay, good. And then the next thing you want to do is, um, oh, you're also going to need to purchase an audio cord. Okay, this is actually, uh, I don't know, it probably costs like 2 or $3. You can get it at Radio Shack. Um, you know, it's it's just like a plug-in audio. Um, I have it plugged into the uh, the audio card that I have in here, which is a Sound Blaster 5.1 Live. Okay. So you run this from the back of your computer, right to here. Get down into here. Okay. This right here, these very first two wires are going to be um, for the entire machine. For like the the entire arcade machine don't even worry about the bottom two wires okay that is uh, it has to do with circuitry wiring up in here which you will not have to worry about so don't even worry about it but basically white goes with white red goes with red that's pretty self-explanatory I think you can figure that out so once you do that what's my time going on okay so the next thing you want to do is, um, I prefer a wireless keyboard. Um, doesn't really matter what you have. Keyboard, you do need a keyboard and you need a mouse. Um, but anyway, you plug the keyboard in the keyboard slot. Um, I have a wireless mouse as well because it's just more convenient. Um, so you plug the mouse in the mouse slot. And this is probably where I'm at right now. Video. Am I close to ten? No, I'm not close to ten. Okay. Um, Two minutes. Okay. Well, the next part of the segment on converting the machine, I am going to show you how to uh, hook the wires up properly within the two boards. They're actually going to be found right in here in this in this uh, player one um, first uh, first panel off to your right, and on the player two the first panel the top panel off to your left. Okay. Um, I'm not going to have enough time right now. Uh, it's kind of late, um, so I'm going to pick this up in the next recording, and I'm going to show you how the wires have to be bridged within the two um, to get the panels to actually correspond with the keyboard, because that's actually what's going on here is whenever you step on a panel, uh, you're actually hitting a letter or a number on the keyboard, so it's registering as keys. So, what do you think? Uh, a couple things I want to point out. Um, a good video card that you would probably want to get is an NVIDIA card. Anywhere between 8800 and 9800, which should suffice, is, should be plenty. Um, I would say anywhere between 256 and up as far as RAM goes. Um, so that way if you choose the option to run videos in the background um, while having, uh, while you're playing, uh, it'll, it'll run smoothly. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for this video. Um, I hope you'll catch me on the second part.